Welcome to the Creative Tribe Podcast. This is a podcast about all of the things that fuel a creative lifestyle. I'm Rita. And I'm Brian. And together we are Label Me Other. Label Me Other is our production company, and one of our goals is to create creative problem solvers. If you are a creative and this sounds interesting to you, consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Look us up by The Creative Tribe. You can also find tons of amazing creative tips on our TikTok page at Label Me Other. Or if you have any questions in the realm of content creation, then feel free to drop us a line at labelmeother at gmail.com. We strive to, and for the most part, do post new podcast episodes every Tuesday. Mm-hmm. So we'd like to start our podcast off with a vent session. This is where we get anything off of our chest that has us in a negative mood because we believe the keys to a healthy lifestyle is having the space to shake off any negative energy you may have stored within. So for today's vent, mine is a relatively positive vent. Um, It's my epiphany of self-discovery. And I kind of feel like this epiphany came from this mastering your own destiny challenge I've been doing. But I realized very recently that you know, we tout being or helping people be created into creative problem solvers. But defining what exactly that means is something that is always brewing in the back of my mind. I'm always thinking like, how do we, how do we do that uh, per se? It's one thing to do something really well, but then to be able to explain how you do it and your steps and your process to it. Um, And so the epiphany was me discovering, oh, wow, I've been creative problem solving for a very, very long time and being able to go back in time and see just how I was creatively problem solving at previous jobs and previous areas of my life. And then actually discovering now, oh, there is a process to it. And this is how you, this is how I've done it. And Mm -hmm. and Brian as well, like we are very uniquely dispositioned to be able to see a problem that exists, a a gap somewhere per se, um, develop a plan into fixing that gap or implementing that gap, vetting that experience. And then, you know, like I said, devising a plan that we can actually implement in order to correct said problem. And so it's, I don't know why it just never clicked for me until just recently, Mm -hmm. but it's like, whoa, this is what we do this is how we do it. And now it's like, okay, how do we package that? How do we, how do we use that to our benefit? How do, how do we display that? How do we, what do we do with that information now? And so it's, it's an exciting event for me just to be like, whoa, it's crazy. It's like, wow. It's like a great discovery. I want to show you something right quick. Just one second. One second. I want to show you something. Okay. Okay. So yeah. So, so Rita challenged us to like, we need to write down how we problem solve. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Rita, I was like, I don't, you know, I I, I do it so automatically. I don't know. It's like, yeah. I, I was like, think of myself, I was like, how do I go through the steps? But I did the work and I did a mind map. Now I haven't like written this out, but I just want to show you the mind map right here. You Holy see that? Crap. Like that is my problem solving process that I now have to, I now have to iron out and put it in a nice, you know, outline form, but yeah. that's what it looks like. So that is like, and that's not even like I, there. Are, there are there are other areas where I can just really just dive in deeper, to dig in deeper a little bit, a little, a little bit more, to explain a little bit more. But that's it. That's yeah. it. And it's like so I finally got it down, and it looks like that. And I was sitting back looking at it, I was like, man, that is crazy. Yeah, that, it's that, totally that, crazy. When you mind map it out, like that's what my process looks like. So yeah, I'm excited just like you readers to like, you know, now we have finally have it down on paper somewhat to kind yeah. of craft it and mold it to something that we can that we can share with people, you know. Right. Like if you if you guys are not subscribed at this very moment, you should absolutely consider subscribing because mm-hmm. things are going to blow up here because all of this knowledge we want to impart into you. We want to help you guys really mold yourselves into being these creative problem solvers that can go into any space and determine a problem and then devise a plan to fix that problem. I mean, it's really exciting stuff. And and now that we're more aware of like, okay, this is how we can do it. This is how we can structure for you guys. I mean, it's going to be some awesome stuff coming out from yeah. this channel and from us. So definitely consider subscribing. We would love to have you here. <clears throat> Excuse me. But yeah, that's my event. I'm I'm pumped too. Like, yeah, geek, super geeked. Yeah. 
So this leads us to our main topic today, which is unreciprocated epiphanies. And so I want to break down just a little bit of what exactly that is. I know most of us know what an epiphany is, but it's it's always nice to have the definition here. So an epiphany refers to a sudden and profound rationalization or understanding about something. It is often described as a moment of clarity or insight that brings about a new perspective, deep understanding, or significant revelation. Epiphanies can occur in various aspects of life, such as personal experiences, relationships, creativity, problem solving, or gathering a new understanding of oneself or the world. These moments of sudden insight can be transformative and lead to a change in belief, attitudes, or actions. Epiphanies are often accompanied by a sense of excitement, enlightenment, or a feeling of aha as new connections or meanings become apparent. So I think for me, I had to learn a particular lesson that I want to share today quite a few years ago, but it was a big lesson. And that lesson was that sometimes we get these epiphanies as creatives, right? And the first thing you want to do, like it says, you get excitement. You you want to share that with other people. And oftentimes, more often than not, I believe, you're you're hit with sort of like this emotion of this unreciprocated emotion, right? Mm-hmm. They they're not mm-hmm. as excited as you. They they don't see the big aha that you see. And then you're immediately met with like this feeling of like kind of like I don't want to say depression, but maybe something along the lines of just feeling down, feeling like, oh, well, maybe it isn't so great. Maybe I'm off base here. Maybe this isn't, you know, what I think it is. Self-doubt. Yes, the self-doubt comes out heavy. Mm. And so, you know, for me, younger Rita, that used to crush me in a way. It used to make me really feel as though I wasn't on the right track that I thought I was, or I wasn't really... um receiving the epiphany the way I should have been and so I I urge you if you if you're having these epiphanies and you're sharing them with people who can't reciprocate that at the moment you really need to know that it's not it's not you it's them right they they, there's a plethora of reasons and I'll go over a few in here in a minute Mm -hmm. of why they they can't be at the same particular excitement level that you can about this particular epiphany and it just takes time. People are just in different spaces and zones and, you know, in their lives. Yeah. Yeah. I, I totally agree. I mean, cause it's full disclosure. I mean, mm-hmm. it's interesting that you bring this up, but it's like, I experienced this sometimes with you, Rita. Do you? Like, oh, yeah. 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 Cause it's like, I'll get really, I'll, I'll get really excited about like a revelation of something that I discovered mm-hmm. and I'll bring it up. And it's kind of like, you know, you'll, you'll take it in but that excitement level, I mean, because it's it's because it's, it's my revelation, so I can't expect yeah. you to be as excited as I am. Yeah. But yeah. I've learned that because this, you know, I'm pretty sure that you'll get into this. It's just like like you said, people process it in different ways. So like my initial like yeah excitement, you know, because it, it's is way more intensified than yours because I see it. Yeah. I'm just now presenting this to you. Mm-hmm. You, it may take a little bit longer for you to see it, or there are other things that I may have to show to be like, Hey, this is this revelation that I have is working. And then you're like, Oh yeah, this is working. And then the excitement is there. Yeah. But that, that's something that I had to work on on myself and had to tell myself like, Hey, off top, everybody's not going to see it. Mm-hmm. And yeah. sometimes you have to, over time, you have to show them. Yeah. And show and be like, hey, this is working. And not to let that, not to let that self-doubt get in, you know, be planted in yourself. It's like, no, it's like, no, this is a good idea. This is a good revelation. Yeah. It's just gonna take time. It's just gonna take time. You know, and so don't be mad at the other person. Yeah. You, know, you can't you can't be mad. It's just that, like you said, you have to understand that everybody processes things in different ways. Right. Absolutely. And there's times where you're like, I guess you just have to see that when you're on a um, self-improvement journey Mm -hmm. and you're trying to see things that are maybe going wrong, going right, going whatever way in your life for yourself, you know, through your particular lens, you know, it is harder for other people to see that, Mm -hmm. you know, that vision or whatever you have for yourself. And Mm -hmm. and so, you know, a couple, a couple of things that I have here written down for reasons why people can't quite be as excited as you is 
Brian hit the, the nail on the head, different perspectives. You know, mm-hmm. people come from diverse backgrounds. They have different worldly views. They have different ways of seeing things. And maybe they just struggle to see it the way that you're currently seeing it. And another one um, could be lack of context. You know, people have different personal experiences and it stems from um, experiences maybe another person hasn't had before. So um, I guess if you're, um, let's say if you were with your boss, for example, and they said something to you that motivated you to do something else and it gave you a great idea. Well, your friend wasn't there with your boss. They didn't get that word of wisdom. They didn't get that moment of context to know where that came from and how they delivered that message to you to even begin to be piqued by what you said. So, you know, lack of context can really play a part into it. Um, resistance to change. Um, so, you know, some people just aren't ready to change and they're not ready to, you know, to shift their thinking. Another one is emotional investment. So this is going to challenge them to confront uncomfortable truths that they may not be ready to to look at within themselves. Communication and expression. So um, messages can be unclear um, or it could lack empathy. So this is a moment where maybe your delivery could be a little funky where, you know, the person just, just didn't grasp it or they just didn't feel like they could take it in. Um, and then this is one, I think, that really can hit the nail on the head. They want to see proof. Sometimes people want proof. They want to be like, oh, okay, well, when it's working for you, then I'll take it in. Or when it's, you know, like even when you were saying with me, like, okay, once I can see, I don't know what it was, what I did, you might have had that that you're referring to. But, mm-hmm. but I'm just saying for an example, if I could see analytics, then I could see, oh, Brian was right. Like this, this particular thing is great. You know, you yeah. can see proof and you're like, oh, okay, Brian was, was right on this. Um, so sometimes people like, you know, they want to see the proof before they're like, hmm, their epiphany was spot on. Maybe I should, you know, do a little bit of that. So, yeah. So those are some of the reasons that could really lead people to be, you know, not as receptive to your epiphanies. I mean, these are, these are great. I mean, cause I'm thinking about um, resistance to change. Uh, the first one, because I feel like in our, in our day jobs, we, we encounter that a lot. Um, people yeah. just don't want they're comfortable where they are and even just the slightest bump up in like your standard or like your effort, like they just don't want to, like they're comfortable with where they are. And sometimes you just, you just have to respect that. Like you, again, it's like, you can't change people. I mean, you can plant the seed there for them to make their own change, but you can't make them change. Uh, so that's one thing that really stood out to me. And the other one is emotional investment. Mm. Uh, cause like I fall victim to that. Like a lot of times if somebody is trying to pitch an idea to me, you know, it may challenge, you know, how I already think about said topic or subject or whatever. Sure. And, you know, eventually it may, it'll take a little time for me to, you know, mow that over to see that other point of view. And eventually, you know, I'm like, you know what, that they had a really good point. Let's let me go back and be like, Hey, you know, you had mentioned that this was a great point. We should really try to investigate this, this, this method or this, this path. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like this is like that, th- those are two that really stood out to me in yeah. this list. And I think for me, it's like, I used to think epiphanies should just be for you. Like these should just be messages for you. However, my mind set has shifted into epiphany should be for the people you can trust with your epiphanies, mm-hmm. right? Like the people that you can invest your time in. And like for Brian and I, Brian is definitely one of my go-to people. And I feel as though, even if he doesn't get the epiphany, he's worth sharing the epiphany with, you know, because he's never going to put me down for an epiphany I had. Mm-hmm. He will most definitely you know, counter back, ask some questions, maybe give me some thoughts to think about within that epiphany. Um, But he's a person I know that I can trust my epiphanies with. You can't do that with everybody. You can't do that with everybody because people Mm -hmm. will, they will rip you to shreds and they will, they will discourage you from going forth with your epiphanies. And so a lot of times your epiphanies need to stay just with you. But if you have a creative friend, a creative person that you can you know, confide that in and know that they have your best interest, then those are great people to share your epiphanies with, you know? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, especially, I mean, cause like Rita, you may not like to hear this, but it's like, I feel like for creatives, 
you need this type of partner. So like Rita, she's more into the like proof aspect mm -hmm. of this, of this, of this list. So a lot of times in order to keep myself motivated, I try to celebrate even like the smallest of like, you know, like successes. I want to say mm -hmm. we talked about this in a previous podcast about celebrating your successes, even just the smallest piece of it. Mm -hmm. So I'll have an epiphany and mm -hmm. I'll come to Rita. And so knowing myself is it's either one or two things that'll make me hit a brick wall with, with, with Rita. Mm -hmm. either the communication and, and expression that she put on this list. Cause a lot of times like my ideas, it's just a bunch of things going and it comes out jumbled. Even if it's like maybe kind of organized in my mind, whenever I communicate it, it may be a little bit confusing. It's not fully thought out. So mm -hmm. I hit a brick wall that makes me go back and refine my idea. Mm -hmm. So that's what I love about Rita and sharing things, you know, creatively Yeah, is that, it helps me refine my idea. It helps to sharpen my communication skills whenever I'm pitching something. So, cause we're going to yeah. be in these situations to where we have ideas and we need to communicate these ideas to a client, to who, who, to whomever we yeah. need to be sharper in that. And I know I need to be sharper in that. And so whenever I bounce ideas off and I kind of do it even more now because I'm really into making myself sharper in those areas. Sure. And yeah. then the second one is proof. It's like, okay, I see this, you know, opening or something is like on the uptick and I may share it with Rita. Mm -hmm. And she's like, okay, she'll she'll hear me. She'll yeah. hear me. And I and 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 I'm grateful for that that she's like, I'm listening. Mm -hmm. But I can tell that you need a little bit more before you like fully take in the idea or this uptick that I'm seeing. Sure. And so sure. again, that makes me want to, okay, well, let me dive more into the analytics. And the thing is, is that, you know, I don't know if you notice this, but like, I'll come to you for like certain things, say like in December or January, mm -hmm. and then I'll come back to it, to that same thing. Mm. But now I'm coming back to it with more proof, with better communication and then you're able to accept you're like oh okay yeah that's a good idea and then the then, then the ball gets to moving interesting so like we have our own like way of like betting these these new ideas these epiphanies <clears throat> before we like you know hey let's roll because if it was just me i would yeah. just take it and just roll with it and there's no like refining it's just we're gonna go Gotcha. But, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. You know the dynamic that we have is that whenever I present it with you, mm -hmm. it's more of okay. I hear you. Let's bet it. Give it a little bit more time. Or I hear you. Can you can you like communicate that better? Can you flesh out the idea better to where it's more presentable to where you know you can accept it? Because I know now that if if Rita can understand it and accept it, other people can. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, that's, that's how I view it. For sure. And I'm, you know, this podcast is a really great thing because I think it's always interesting hearing how other people perceive your, um, your methods, if you will. Mm -hmm. And so this is the first time we've ever like out loud spoke about like how you receive feedback um, from me, how I receive feedback from you. Cause I would have never thought I was like a proof person because mm -hmm. I, I don't consider, I like, I don't consider myself to be a proof person. I consider myself to be a, okay. I am, I am a perfectionist in the sense that I'm like, okay, we do need to think about a lot of different aspects and maybe that's probably a, a thing I could work on. Um, but also I'm, I'm like, I guess I'm, um, I feel like I'm always open to trying things, even if I'm like, okay, I don't quite see it, but let's try it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I feel like, I feel like I come across like that, but maybe I, maybe I don't necessarily come across very, um, you know, cause I, I, don't, I don't particularly like knowing that I'm like the person that's like, all right, once it's working, let, I'll believe it, you know, because I am a, a very faith, faith based person. So I don't know. I mean, but I, I, I feel like for 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 us now, I like that's how I use that because I'm constantly as a creative, I want to get better. 
yeah. and I want to improve on the areas where I'm lacking. And sure. um, over time, I'm realizing that I have great ideas in my head, but whenever they come out, I don't communicate them properly. I don't communicate them clearly. Okay. Um, okay. And so, so like with you, so that's why, you know, I come to ideas to see with you to, with, with ideas to see if I nail that, you know, just crystallizing that idea. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so depending on the reaction that I get from you is like, that's the instant feedback. Okay. Well, I need to go back, work on this more or, gotcha. Oh, I nailed this. This, 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 this was good. Um, so, I mean, but like you said, a lot of people are different. Other people may take that and then they may shut down. I don't know. But yeah. with me, it's like, well, there's an opportunity to make this idea better because yeah. I have confidence in the idea. I just, I won't see, I want Rita to see yeah. what I see, you know? Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. I, th I think that is a common trend, even in, in old partnerships I've had that they've, they've had something very similar to what you said, where it's like, I'm going to ask a lot of questions and I'm definitely going to, I'm, I'm going to, I don't want to say challenge the idea, but I'm definitely going to ask a lot of questions and try to visualize how you're visualizing it. Um, for me, Brian, I think, I think the thing for you when I bring ideas may be just different perspectives and not in a necessarily bad way, but, yeah. but Brian, you have a very interesting way of um, seeing things. You see things from a, which I, which I love. I mean, mm -hmm. we need that. We totally need that. We don't want to see, see things the same way. But um, he always brings to brings other viewpoints, potentially other um, sinkholes for the idea or where it could get caught up. And so he he really challenges me in that way where it's like, OK, I'm going to just warn you that this could happen or these people could be like this or this thing could be like this or, mm -hmm. you know, you know, that that sort of thing. And so. It, it's good to it's good to have that um I think but that's always my challenge is to be like okay man Brian you put that bug in my ear and I'm like man Brian says you know mm, and he you know like I can't think of a particular example but it could be something at work where it's like you've been there longer you know people you know people's temperaments attitudes all those things and so these are things I haven't factored these are things I'm like oh that is a you know an outlier that I don't know as well as him and I I want to heed his word on this. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so and, it's stuff like that. And I do that not to like to deter people because I know that could come across as people like, oh, well, maybe I shouldn't do it. It's mm -hmm. just that I I run like simulations in my mind. And that's part of the problem solving process that I have down on paper is like I run this because my problem solving way is kind of like a it's like a cycle. Mm -hmm. So I, before I actually like implement it, I do the mental work. I run it mentally in my mind. I run the simulation in my mind. And so all of those like points to where it didn't work out, I kind of mention to people so they can think about it. Cause maybe they didn't think about that. Like, well, Hey, you know, have you thought of, you know, Hey, you know, we'll be careful about this because this may not work or, you know, yeah. just like you said, you know, or you dealing with other people, uh, for a situation that you're problem solving and be like, hey, you know, well, this person, they're not willing to change in this area. So you need to use that information to inform what you're doing. Sure. Um, yeah. But yeah, but I just don't don't want that to deter people. And I feel like a lot of times outside of you, it may make them not want to. But it's just I'm just trying to give them I'm kind of giving them like a map and be like, hey, there's a sinkhole here. There's a big boulder here. You may want to go around this way. I'm just trying to show them like where the obstacles are. Right. Yeah. And I could easily in the past probably consider it to be like a resistance to change. Like, oh, Brian just doesn't want to change that. He he he's just trying to he don't want he'd be nice. He don't want to change that. But it's really not a resistance to change. It is just a, a different difference in perspective. And it not even a difference, but more so like a broader perspective of what you really about to get yourself into so that you could just see the whole picture. Yeah. Um, and so, like I said, it's not a, not a bad thing at all. I think it's a very necessary um, thing that I need when I'm, especially when I come up with crazy ideas um, that are, that are wild. Um, so, so yeah, so yeah. I'm I'm telling you guys, this is this is a gem of an episode. So um I hope you guys are 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 getting something out of this. If you are, comment below, let us know that this is helping you, that this 
this content is useful for you and it just helps us to know kind of where to steer these podcast episodes. So for this next segment, we're going to do the Mastering Your Own Destiny. I'm going to give you an update on how things are going for this week. Um, last week, my update was that it's a lot of work. And this week is that things are moving quite fast. Um, it's really interesting how, you know, almost it seems as almost the moment I decide to come off of autopilot, you know, uh, pitch this idea. And then all of a sudden now it's like it's really coming to life. And so in a big way. Uh, and so. Yeah, almost quicker than I am ready for, <laughs> if like, you look, if you will. Look how that works. It's like you say, hey, I want to do this. And then the, the universe or whatever you believe in, the universe, God, it's like, okay, here you go. Yeah, here you go. <laughs> it's like, here, here you go. I'm going to give you everything you need. Yeah, to, 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 to get this happening. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's, like, it's, go it's going like that. Yep, that's exactly yep. how it's going. Um, mm -hmm. And and. Just to give a little, I'll just give a smidgen because I don't have a lot of time left and we're going to keep this relatively short, but mm -hmm. pitch this idea for um, a studio room with coupled with um, a great idea Brian has about delivery options. And so, you know, pitch this idea, a way to do it. Now, you know, the boss is on board. What do you need? Okay, well, we need a room. Well, we need equipment. Well, we need this. So, okay, draw up, draw up equipment list, drew, you know, a, a prospect for a room. Y'all, like literally two, three weeks, however many weeks it is. Now we have a room, you know, 8K plus um, um, equipment list has been approved and ready to go. So like literally this whole studio is about to be built, you know, with basically Brian and I as supervisors of this thing. And we are, you know, about to create something from scratch. Once again, you know, going back to creative problem solving. It's like, once again, taking what we do well, seeing a gap and then like implementing steps on how to get it produced, how to get it done and implementing on it. I mean, it's just wild. All I can say is if you, if you haven't just, just try the challenge, try the challenge. Uh, I'll give, I'll keep continuing to do updates on it, but things are moving really quickly, much quicker, quicker than I assumed. I'm still not a creative director yet, however, but I mean, my gosh, we, we aren't far from basically being that without a title, yeah. you know? Yeah. So yeah. Um, that's, that's kind of how, how it's moving right now. So I'll, I'll come back next week and keep you guys updated again. <laughs> so this next, um, segment is kind of a new segment I'm trying out. We'll see how it goes, but it's called sustaining motivation. And this is where we're going to kind of highlight um, a clip of something that can kind of help you this week with your motivation. If you're feeling a little down, need a little pick me up. So this one comes from uh, Caroline Waga. She's the CEO for Essence Magazine. And I thought it was really profound. Here it goes. Who you are is who you are. If you cannot be who you are, where you are, you change where you are, not who you are. There are so many opportunities that I missed over managing my who, making myself small, trying to mimic other people, pretending like I was okay or not okay, having psychological breakdowns and having to come back to work and learn how to live with depression. Like there's so many stories of me trying to change my who that would have saved so much energy if I would have actually realized it was my where, my physical where, my mental where, my whatever. Do not stop until you find the where where your who is best. And those that are moving into early career have an opportunity to level set a new way of working that demands an environment that their who can exist in and refuses to go into where's that won't do that. And if we have this new generation of workers doing that, then the where's will start to adjust. The minute we compromise and accept, the where's get to take a little bit longer to adjust. This generation has an opportunity to change the way of working that centers on the who. All right, you guys, thanks so much for listening. We appreciate you being here. It is our hope that these episodes provide a window into the daily mindset, joys, and challenges that creative people face every single day. It is a creative lifestyle and you aren't alone in it. If you're looking for more creative uh, talk, just like this one, then uh, head over to our Label Me Other page on TikTok and um, you can just search it by uh, at Label Me Other and you'll find tons of other additional videos that you could use to kind of help you out. In the meantime, um, but get out there and go create. Bye. See ya.